Hello, I'm here again. Welcome to my channel. My name is Festus. Today, I have something special for you. If you are trying to establish or run a new school from scratch, this video will be useful to you. If you are a pastor growing a new church ministry, finding a parish within a particular geographical location, maybe a rural setting or a remote part of the town, and you are having certain challenges, this video will benefit you. It's usually a short video. I may go for part two or not. So please sit down and listen. These things are these things are as cast of fine. This kind of you know exposition. They are taken from real life experience. What our hands have handled, what we have seen over the years. So today I'm going to talk about how you can grow your how you can grow your parish your new church as a missionary pastor starting a small church within the community at a particular remote part of the town you know and for those of you who are facing frustration on the job this will benefit you this will benefit you and uh, you see the church ministry and a school business are similar. I've been through both over the years. Years and years and years. Working from one place and one level to the other. They are similar. So if you are starting a small school in a particular, maybe in a rural setting, in a remote part of the town, this video will quite benefit you. So let's go there now. How to grow your church or how to grow your small school. So you can see that where the, 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 the scripture says, do not disregard or hold as inconsequential the days of small beginnings. The principle of growth is you must start small. Everything that will ever become great starts small. Did you see a giant of a man? A man that is so big, mighty, see muscles everywhere, mighty, hefty. That hefty wrestler you watch on a wrestling TV. He wasn't born like that too, with all those big muscles and hefty body. That man was born as a little infant. Some, sometimes even some of them were born having very light weight. You know, the nurses complained that this child is too light. This child looks like um, it's, not, it's not like a normal baby. It's too light, so tiny. You know, some babies, you see them very tiny. Looks as ah, is this is this baby sick? But eventually, that tiny little baby, with the process of time, process of growth, becomes a very mighty, hefty, lanky guy. That you say, wow. So the process of growth, everything that 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 must be big, must start small. You must know that you are certain small doesn't mean that you are miserable. It means that you have a future. The principle of the monster seed shared by Jesus Christ in his uh, parable of uh, the monster seed teaches us these principles. That every big thing, every, make the, that mega church you see, started small. It started, in fact, it started in the mind of someone that God gave the vision. It, it didn't start. It, it didn't. It didn't start in a on a land. 
it started as an idea. So a big church ministry is starting as an idea that the Holy Spirit gives. A big school starts like an idea in the mind of the one that God has laid it in his mind to, to start to think about it. That's, that's how it starts. And then you begin to come out and lay steps. So today I'm going to talk about some of the things we could do to, you know, begin to grow. The challenge that people have is, is not starting. Most people know how to start, but they don't know how to take it from the starting point to the, at least to a growing level. Most people that have spoken with, talked with, examined, been with, had the problem of being stuck at a point. And that's the, the area I'll measure today. Maybe I'll do other videos to continue from that point. So that's the most challenge people have. It's not about starting. The Bible says, the Bible says it's not happy is the end of a thing. I think it's in the Ecclesiastes. It says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Meaning that it's the starting is not the issue. I'm starting this, I've started the school. I've started, I've started my school. That idea of, I've always had an idea of owning a school. The starting is not the issue. Taking it to a, 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 a level where people can say, wow, this is growing. This is something. This is phenomenal. That is where a lot of people have problems. They have played or come a, a brown out, a point where they are no longer moving forward and they don't want to pack up, pack up. Say, no, we can't pack up. Oh, you are grown now, wahala. Let's leave it, wahala. That is, a lot of people have found themselves in that position, including some of my pastor friends. You understand? So, the great, the, the, do you know the, the, the greatest lie that most found, uh, most, uh, people, tatas tell themselves? Either it's, either whatever you are doing, maybe in school or church ministry, the greatest lie they have always told themselves is, I don't have money now. The other, the other people, by comrades who are into this thing, you see the, you see the level they've gotten. They have money. It's their money that is speaking to them. Now, when you tell yourself that lie, you have, it's like you nail it. It's like someone nailing his coffin to, to finally give up because you, you begin to think that because you do not have money, there is no hope anymore. You say, where am I going to get the money? I cannot borrow from the bank. I do not have collateral. I don't have properties and land to use to borrow money. So, then you look forward, you look backward, sideways, no help. You give up. Don't tell yourself that. that uh, don't, con don't console yourself with those statements. I don't have money. That's why the work is not growing. It's a lie. Why the work is not growing? Well, why you have come to a point where you are stuck is that you stopped seeking for ideas yes you have stopped seeking winning ideas progressive ideas you've stopped you stopped that's why everything stopped at every level you are financially your church can grow it's not so much about the money and your school too can grow it's about ideas. Ideas rule the world. Though. That's what they say. It's not manifest. Money doesn't come without ideas. It is the ideas that will bring people, that will bring the money. So the issue of saying, I don't have money. What can I do? Anyway, let us continue in mediocrity. Let's continue to do what we are doing, running in circles. Everything is the same way every year. No, 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 no. Now, for you to move from where you are stuck, these are some things you should do. God told Moses in Deuteronomy, he said, you have been, you have been, you guys, Israel, and Moses, all of you have been here for too long. 
if it, that is that is where a lot of parishes found themselves a point where they can't move forward they can't move backwards we've been here for too long on this mountain how long would you be here start taking your leave start making a move so how can you make that move that's what i want to share in this video now human beings are not attracted to whatever you are doing if they don't see new things I hope you have taken note of that. Start new things. It must soon always be predicated on money. I've told you that you should put this money, money, money matter aside. Idea comes first. Now, look at you as a parish pastor. Look at your environment. Look at the auditorium. This auditorium setting and everything you see i've been like this for two three years now and you are crying money what I, what new ideas can you put here because human beings respond to new things that's the way we are wired that's the way we are wired look at you as a class teacher see your see your school environment see your classroom it's been like that for two three years there's no new thing and you are crying money 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 the classroom is, the walls everywhere is boring. It doesn't look like a learning environment and you're crying money. So what new thing can you do? Because you, you have talked at this point for long. And one of the things you experience when you get stuck is discouragement. It is discouragement. Two things, it is discouragement and remaining accepting mediocrity. Accepting mediocrity here means that, well, this is the way we, this is where we are stuck. This is the life we have found ourselves. <laughs> Let's continue to manage. Now, when you hear people say that, it sh that should annoy you. Let's continue to manage. No, we cannot continue to manage. We should do anything within our power to add, to, to, to create something new. So the question, the point I'm making now, pastor, proprietor, create something new in that your business or church ministry environment. Human beings respond to things that are new. Let me tell you, if you create just one thing that is new, eh, everybody passing that way, that location where you have your your, your 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 business your school business or your church ministry they will notice it human beings have eyes that always get attracted to something different or new that's the way we are wired see look at the parish for instance those of the those of us who operate who pastored and assisted different pastors over the years most times, most of the pastors or parishes did not have money and we could not borrow from the bank because we didn't have collateral. We didn't have, you know, the means of paying back such good loads. Look at it. Sometimes we just, if let me describe most of our auditorium. And those places now, if you go to those places now, they have become mighty cathedral. They have become mega churches. You know, if you are in at the village setting, like in this county where I am, it's like it is a, 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 a very quiet, cool community. I know there are not so much, so many people. Everywhere is peaceful and quiet. But those of you in, in a particular remote area in town, usually those days when I was still active and working with different uh, uh, pastors or founders, we had a zinc, we had a roof over us. And suspended with pillars, the iron pillars, metal pillars, or wooden pillars. The floor is plastered floor, cement floor. There's no money to put tiles, you know. Some church ministries start that way. My friend, who is in U.S. now, uh, he started here when he was still with us here. His uh, church uh, auditorium is just a makeshift makeshift uh, auditorium with plywood. But there were some people, they won't be creative. 
with but look at the way he became creative with the plywood brought him people that can do you see this thing is creativity bringing creativity to what you are doing then you move forward if you don't bring in creativity you are there crying you are there praying you just continue to pray and continue to cry nothing will happen god won't come down to do it it won't come down but it's going to be giving you idea through videos like this seminars and people that will actually you know show you the way but you are not you, you, you are not picking the signal so you continue to pray pray and cry you'll be there you'll be there you'll be there so move forward that's what uh, uh, god told moses and the children of israel in the tournament you've been on this mountain you stay here for too long don't stay here anymore move forward so bring in creative ideas that my friend that my pastor friend who is in u.s now when he was doing his church ministry here Look at the way he, he used plywood to create the, to bring in creativity into the auditorium environment. Are you? you? If you look at it, you might think, ah, he has spent millions here. No, no. He, just, he spent little money, but creativity is everything. Artistic, be artistic minded. Bring in the art, artistry into what you are doing. Human beings all over the world love artistry. He, what you can do with what you have. Elijah, uh, is he Elijah? Yes, Elijah asked the woman, you are owing a debt. Your husband owed a debt that he couldn't pay till he died. Now they have come to take your two children as servants to pay back. What do you have? She said, I don't have nothing. She told a lie. Everybody has something. Now, you that is doing the church ministry and all the school ministry, you have been always crying, I don't have nothing now. I don't have nothing now. We don't have money. See the way we are. We have been managing now. You have been telling yourself lies all these years. Because the, what you are crying about is not what, that, or it's not what is uh, stopping you from making progress. It's the creative ideas that you lack that is keeping you where you are, while you are not moving forward. After my friend, you know, made a creative work of that auditorium with just plywood, he painted it. You know, or his mate would have just done any shoddy, shoddy, shoddy sh you know, shoddy work. I said, like, it's church, it's church, it's church, it's church. Let's let's let us let us let us manage it the way it is. Uh, it's school, is it not school? Let's manage let's manage it the way it is. That's the reason why many people don't go forward. But he brought in creativity, pure creativity. And he brought in an artist, you know, who began to look at some touches they could add. By the time it was true with the with, with the, 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 the construction of his auditorium, was a makeshift auditorium that's not a permanent structure. Everybody that came into that said, wow, everybody is wow, wow, wow. This is great. Gradually, he began to grow. People respond to something new, something interesting, something they look at and is inspiring them. Yeah, that's why I say the first step to do to come out of this uh, stock, you have been stuck into one position for too long. You know, using that uh, analogy from the astronomy, you stuck. So the first step you have to make is bring in creativity. Look at your ugly environment. What improvement can you make? What new things can you bring? Like the, my friend, uh, that, that, uh, my pastor friend uh, uh, experience I just shared now. People started coming into the church. People started coming in. So, recreate that environment. Say, I don't have money. I don't have money. You have a roof over you, Abby. Praise the Lord. You are not under rain. Praise the Lord. Your roof are pillars, Abby. Now, the next thing to do is look at your altar. You have, your altar is ugly. The view if I should snap the altar and show you, it's not interesting. It doesn't call attention. So recreate that altar. If there's nothing, if there's no uh, wall, you know, at the back of the altar, 
you know, please build one. If you don't have money to build a wall, I suggest that you should um, make use a wood to demarcate it. Create a very beautiful design that speaks volume, that has scriptural basis, and put it powerfully at your altar background. Create a beautiful altar background that when you stand on the pulpit speaking, that background is a different message, a wonderful message altogether, a beautiful scenery that even anyone could desire to stand by it and snap a photo. So do something like that. That's how to do that. Don't continue to say there are there's no money, there's no money. There are little little things you can do that does not that may not need much, that does not take much from your pocket. Start from that. Start from that. The same thing too to the teacher. Look at your classroom environment. They are very appalling. What can you do? Create learning aids. It should be a citadel of learning. That when you are not even busy teaching, the children are learning from the, the teaching aids that you have. Make the classroom out of this world with your design. It, it does, it's not something that you have to spend much. Get papers, get colors, get markers, get postal color, get color papers, begin to create, begin to bring in learning, uh, learning quotes, special quotes, different things, different write-ups that kids look at, they learn from it. Colorful, beautiful images of animals, cartoons. You know, if you can't create this thing, call someone to help you out. Call that there's still some artists that can work for a little amount of money. Involve them. Involve them. Get ideas from the internet. Get your pictures and write-ups. Look at the internet. You will get millions of ideas to flow with. Bring in your own ideas too. You can combine your own idea with the one you have seen. Match them together and create something new. Make the classroom very interesting. And it is the children that will say, wow, our school has changed your mommy. Daddy, I love your school. And uh, they have beautified everywhere. Oh, so bring in that creativity and you see yourself leaving that uh, position where you've been for, for, for so long now. So that is it. Now, for, for the church auditorium that I talked about, the altar, that's where to start because everybody that sits in the church looks forward to one direction at the altar. Make it make it a lovely place. You, the, the design at the back can be, a flag, can be printed on a flex. Design can be made on a computer and then printed as a flex. It may not be handmade. And if it's handmade, that is very good, fine. But if it's not handmade, I think the easiest one is to print it on flex. You know, bring in a very good design. Then after that, look at your church environment. It may not have walls, cement walls, maybe because you are using a makeshift uh, building. Or uh, you don't have money to build the walls and make it an, a, a, a very standard auditorium. There's nothing to worry. Everything starts small. So look at what you can do. You have pillars. You may even if you don't have four walls in the church, there are pillars. Create very beautiful write-ups. Printed out on a flex, you know, portable sizes, mounted on uh, a plywood cut out and then create a border even if you don't have frame you can create the handmade borders you know in solid black or solid color to create a border around every right up now right ups come come out better when they have borders when they are written on a plain surface without borders they don't come out best so create border. Border has that beauty that it gives you every write-up. Make your write-up portable. Could be like a 16 by 20 size. 16 by 20 size is okay. Beautiful. You can beautifully print them out, out in flex. Flex. You know, pasted on a supported by a plywood. 
of the same size, then with a border around it. How these things on the the the, the, the poles that support your roof? Since you don't have a four walls, and if you have four walls, place them neatly on the four walls. Do you know that these things attract attention? That people look at these things we place there, they learn so much. They appreciate the artistry. They, they begin to think that the person, the pastor that has allowed this to be available must be a deeply thinking person. They begin to see that you are going, you are going somewhere. You see, creativity makes people look at you as you, you, you have an idea that is like you are, you have something that you want to offer that is serious. But when they come everywhere, it just, your church auditorium is nothing to write home about. The internal part is something that everywhere is naked, empty. They look at you as a pastor that is not even serious. Maybe you are just here to just capitalize on our money. You understand? So introduce creativity into your church environment, especially interior part. <clears throat> I'll talk about the exterior part. Now, the exterior part is where the people passers by, those who are not your members, see mostly because they wouldn't even come inside. The exterior part too has to be worked upon. Maybe you may have to buy uh, paint, a very good color of paint, and make a very nice painting of your exterior part to look at least clean and neat. Then your church has to have a very well-defined signpost. You know, if it is, <coughs> sorry, it has to, <coughs> you have to write out the name of the church. Uh, for those of you who belong to a mega church, you are a branch, write out your zone, your area, all those things are important. Your, your church should be spelled out there. The days of activity should be spelled out. Most people who pass by look at your church. They, 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 they feel how I wish I can have a glimpse of the, of the program of this church. But some church don't even put those programs. They feel it doesn't, it's not needed. The program we are putting there is for the pastors back. When I come into a community looking for a place to worship, I see a church for the first time. I don't know them. I start judging them from their signboard. That's it. If I come to an area, like I, I moved to this area newly, as I moved to this area newly, I started looking for a school for my children. I, I, I didn't know no one. Yeah, they, they directed me, somebody directed me to a school. That that school is okay. But from the exterior, from the outside part, I start judging that school. I look at it. What I saw on the exterior part is no, 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 no. I don't care about academic uh, performance or the pedigree. But look at the uh, exterior part. That's people judge everything by its label and its cover. A book never sells if it has a bad cover design. And so I don't know why you would say you are stuck in one place. Look at your exterior. Your exterior is not attractive. <clears throat> your exterior.